Hello, my name is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2014 Essentials, and this is the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 8. For this exercise, we're going to work in the drawing named Profiles Beyond, and we're going to use some guidelines to stylize, annotate, and provide object projections for the Madison Lane profile view. So the first thing we'll do, and we're actually going to be working on um, Madison Lane and Logan Court, Step 1 says to change the profile view style of Madison Lane and Logan Court to match Jordan Court. And we certainly could go to Jordan Court and go to Profile View Properties, either in the shortcut menu like I showed you just there. Information tab, we can uh, see that the Jordan Court profile view is set to Major and Minor Grids 10V. And then we could go to Madison Lane and use that same profile view style major and minor grids 10v that's a lot of that's a lot of steps because we have to go in and figure out what the what one profile view style is set to and then apply it to the other one what if we could use the match properties command I'm gonna click the match properties button click Jordan court click Madison Lane and check it out it works just like it does with AutoCAD objects we can use match properties to transfer styles from one civil 3d object to another. So that's pretty sweet. That takes care of step one, which is to change the profile view style, Madison Lane and Logan Court to match Jordan Court. The next thing we want to do is apply the same profile view bands to Madison Lane that have been applied to the other two profile views. Now that we can't do with match properties. We're going to have to go into the profile view properties and check out the bands tab and see that there is a there's a certain band that's being used here and it's not just about the band it's about these other settings as well now we could assume that there's a band set available for that but rather than take a chance I'm gonna go ahead and save what's here as a band set and I'm just gonna call it my band set and we can use that in the other profile view band settings and they will look exactly like the one that we took it from. So now all three profile views have the same bands across the bottom. One thing to be aware of though is that by default the two elevations on these bands both are referencing the same profile. So we need to, we need to fix that. I'm going to go into profile view properties and check out profile 1, profile 2. Notice they're both set to Madison Lane EGCL. I'm going to set profile 2 to Madison Lane FGCL and here we see that it's 177.9 a little higher 175.06 so the existing ground is lower than the finished ground I've got them right I've got them assigned properly profile 1 and profile 2 so it looks looks good so that takes care of step 2 which was to apply the same bands next we want to apply the same profile label set to Madison Lane FGCL that has been used in the other two profile views or profiles. Again, I'm not sure what set has been used, so I'm going to go into the label set for that's in use right now on Jordan Court. So what I'll do is I'll click on the Jordan Court profile and hit Edit Profile Labels. And I'm going to take the labels that you see here and save them as a label set, which I can then apply for Madison Lane. So I'll click Save Label Set. I'll call it My Label Set. Click OK. Click OK again. Now I'll go down here to Madison Lane. Edit Profile Labels. Import Label Set. And there's My Label Set and it'll bring in the exact same settings that I saw on Jordan Court. Click OK and now I've got the same label configuration on both profiles and that was the goal for step three. Step number four is to project the test boring blocks located along the Madison Lane alignment to the Madison Lane profile view. And we want to set the elevations of these test boring blocks to match the Madison Lane existing ground center line. So, a couple of different ways to get started. The way 
that I naturally think to use the software is always with the contextual ribbon tabs. So I'll click on the profile view and that takes me right to the project objects to profile view command. I'll click that. I'll click the test boring symbols along the Madison Lane alignment. Hit enter. I'm going to assume that the style is okay, but for the elevation option, I don't want to use the object elevation. I want to base it on a profile, Madison Lane EGCL. Not only because that's what the exercise tells us, but because if they're test borings, they're usually taken in existing ground. So we want to show them matching up with that with that uh, set of elevations. Click OK. We'll zoom over here to profile view and see what it looks like, and it looks great. We see the test boring symbols. They're oriented along the existing ground profile. It's exactly what I would have hoped to see. Next, step five, we want to project the survey figure representing the north edge of the stream to the Jordan Court profile view. That's this survey figure right here. So again, I'm going to click the profile view, project objects to profile view. I'll select the survey figure and hit enter. This time, I want to use the object's elevations. That's a surveyed edge. It has the elevations that it needs actually built right into it. So I'll click OK, go over to my profile view, and here we see the edge of the stream in relation to the road. Now, why would we care about this? Well, we would hope to see the edge of the stream, which would represent the water level under normal conditions. We want that to appear below the road because obviously if it's above the road then we probably have a flooding situation or a potential flooding situation. Final step on the Jordan Court profile view create a depth label showing the elevation difference between the edge of the stream and the lowest point of the curve. So the lowest point of the curve it actually tells us right on the label is at station 167702 and there's even a little tick mark here and we're going to draw a depth label so I'll go to my Add Labels command, Profile View, Depth, I'll click Add. And this doesn't have to be perfectly, uh, perfectly selected, but I'm going to zoom in pretty close here and pick a spot on that low point label, and I'll pick a spot on the edge of the stream feature line. And that's going to give me a depth of 5.79 feet. So perhaps someone doing a hydrologic study of the site wants to know, you know how much room do I have in a flooding situation? Well, the stream can flood up to a, a depth of 5.79 feet until it gets to the level, the lowest point level of the road. And that could be some critical information that has to do with flooding. So with that, uh, that satisfies all the requirements for the exercise, and that concludes the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 8.